Okay, Walter. I'm making the first cut. Let's see. I've got to um, these these. Um, let me see. I gotta move this around here. Okay, now I can see. Okay. Um, yeah, I gotta replace these. Um, I got. I need some stainless steel cap head screws. These are only two inches, so actually I need about two and a quarter. I ordered some two and three eighths, so I'm gonna need to probably cut them off a little bit. But um, anyway, it doesn't look too pretty with these, but they they work. So just some threaded rod, some T nuts, and some stuff that I use in my clamping stuff. So. I, I, I let this thing's hanging off the edge just a little bit so it's a one inch block it's hanging off the edge just slightly so uh, this is one inch I think uh, let's see what I do with the calipers I measured it the other day I don't think I've cut anything off of it so this is um, whatever it is let's see here yeah it's, it's just about one inch couple thousandths under but so the maximum I can cut cut off because this is sticking out here just a little over an inch so you know I lose a lot because you got to move the tool out half the distance of the diameter by the time you do that you know one inch is about maximum so that's it and the one inch this this two holder seems to be working I started to cut but it, it it doesn't jam or anything. That's one good thing, but the the Shearline motor doesn't have enough torque um, to deal with it. So that's one problem. I don't know if I could maybe change the pulley setup a little bit, but I, I doubt it's going to make much difference. So um, I don't know how fast I'm running right now. Uh, let's see. Got a, uh, let's see here. I think I don't know if I got a. Let's see. I thought I had a piece of tape on here, but I guess I don't. So I can't figure it out. Well, anyway. So it's running fairly slow. You hear the chatter, but you see it's peeling it off, but it's just not enough torque. I need to keep the feet up. And it's hard to get oil down in there too. It's kind of a deep cut, right? You can see, you know. Now when the diameter, I, you know, I cut in a little bit, so I didn't, I, this video would have gotten too long, probably. If, if, I, if I don't keep up the feed, it'll chatter. I wish I had more torque. So I'm convinced, again, using the tank, even though it's a weak little flimsy lathe compared to the other lathe, but, you know, it'll do the job, it just doesn't have enough torque, so, you can hear it, you can see it starting to stall, it doesn't jam or anything, I guess I could douse more oil down in there. I got to keep up the feed. And I get, I need it. If I had, if I had some way to automatically drip the oil, that would help probably. Then I could sit here and keep up the feed. But as soon as I let off the feed, it'll chatter. Not much, you know. The tool holder works perfect. I mean, I, I have no complaints about that. Very solid. Extremely solid. And there's 
getting to be, you know, a lot of resistance right now. I'm down in there a ways, right? So you can see the stuff peeling out of it. I could probably increase the RPM right now. But you gotta keep up the feed, otherwise you're dead in the water. I think when you get your tool holder finished, you're going to be very satisfied with it. After I, um, now, now that I've got the bed, or the cross light extended on the mini lathe, I'm getting down in there a little ways. We need some, we need some oil on it. A lot of chips in there. back it out one time here just for to be doing something. You can see I'm all the way with the blade. I mean I'm I think I'm at the optimum to get this one inch cut off. So put a little bit more oil in there. See if I can get some in there. There it goes. diameter would be a piece of cake. You know, it's a, it's a, I think uh, I think this is maxed out, especially with the shear line motor. When you got when you're cutting the larger diameter, when I when I started here, uh, I had the I had the motor running as slow as possible. This will give me an idea anyway. Pretty sure I have enough blade sticking out. Probably a little bit too much, but I haven't checked yet, but you know, theoretically, when I built this holder, I mean it. It doesn't have a height adjustment on it, see, so theoretically the top of the blade is supposed to be dead center, but I'm not sure that was exactly right. Hopefully it's a little bit low of anything so I could actually shim underneath the block if I needed to. But, um, oh, she's, <laughs> and, and it, I, I guess if I'm not dead center it won't part off, will it? So it'll, it'll ride up or o under or over or something. But if it's dead center, it should part off beautifully. That's it. There it is. Oh, that's... It did a perfect job. I mean, I don't know. It didn't seem to... I mean, that's a 16th inch blade, so... Dropped it. So it's about. Yeah, it does. It does vary. Of course, I don't know about the other side either. So that's. Yeah. So it's a. It varies about ten thousandths. I don't know which side that is though. That could be. I don't know. Anyway. That's it. So there's a one inch piece of ten eighteen steel. Parted off in the tag lathe with the new spring tool holder. Okay? Now let me just run through this a little bit more here. I don't know what RPM I was running. I have no idea. I need to put a piece of tape on here so I can actually check it. But, uh, let's see. I've got a lot of wrenches sitting here. Looks like that's the right one. Well, I got the dropsies today here. I'm not sure which which is I'm going to unscrew first, the T nut or the 
top here. Well, let's do both, and that way we don't have to worry about it. Okay, here we go. Got everything's falling on the floor here. All right. So. There we go. Now I got it apart. Something to wipe it off with a little bit. A little bit of oil on it here, but not much. Looks pretty good. So you see, eventually when I get the screws, so it'll be two nice stainless steel screws that go in there, and that'll do it. As you can see, those these, these screws go right to the bottom or just a little bit before, so I need about another three-eighths of an inch. They didn't have any two and three-eighths, so I had to order two and a half, but that's all right. That'll be fine. You can see... You can see the holder here. So all it is is just two pieces, one block, one large block here, and then one other piece that I cut out the for the holder. And then just two screws putting it onto there. It's pretty solid. Feels real solid. Um, if I if I remember right, I checked it. I could shim this if I needed to, but it's, I think we're dead square here, so as square as it can be, I guess. That's pretty good. So that's it, Walter. Um, on the, the last holder for the mini lathe, I, um, I put a tapered uh, area underneath the clamp so it'd push it down. In this case, the blade fits so tight that this is just a, basically a clamp. That's all it is. It just holds the blade tight to the to the holder. Seems to work. So a little less trouble actually. Your solution is better, but um, I I actually tried to. I I don't know what it looks like, but I tried to visualize what the Armstrong looked like. That's what I tried to accomplish, but. I don't know what that exactly is either because I don't have one to to compare so um, this is a 16 inch slot in here um, you're, you you did you did better using the um, Dremel tool to make a 40,000 slot but I used an end mill once I got a decent end mill it worked perfect so I didn't have a problem with that and this this is a roll pin I just cut it off. So it's a tension pin that's pressed in there with about a three or four thousand uh, interference fit. And um, I don't know if it does any good, probably maybe not, but it doesn't hurt. I see a lot of spring holders have that, some type of a tension uh, bushing in there. So that's what I did. Anyway, that gives you an idea. Um, you should be putting up a video today for me to watch so I can see how yours works. Yours is going to be a lot more convenient because you got it connecting to the quick change tool post, which I didn't want to do because um, I have one of these uh, these jobs here from I don't know what is it um, A to Z, you know, and you know it's all right, but um, to me it's not as solid, you know, between between this. You know, screw down to one T slot, and then uh, you know the the holder uh, on it. You know, all these things you know take away from the rigidity. So I'm thinking, you know, that the solid block is better, but I'm it may not be. Just my just my way of thinking. So anyway. It, this gives you the idea, so hopefully, hopefully it's helpful in some way to somebody. I don't know. Anyway, let me shut this off. I'll call off now. Wherever the switch is.